Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 91, and I'm reading the first two verses. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Well, a very good morning to each and every one of you. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus, and I wish to welcome you to our worship service today. Indeed, a very special service, because I don't know how many of you realize it, but we have started the period of Lent. What is Lent? This is the period of the 40 days where Jesus went into the desert to be tempted by the devil before he comes back and starts his ministry. It's so wonderful to be with you again today. I am sure that you all missed last Sunday because we had our youth service. And for those of you who were not there, oh man, it was wonderful to see those young people and the wonderful story that they brought us in their Christmas play. Please take note that with our Holy Week coming up in April, Please see if you can't make a plan to join us for our evening services. Remember, we start on Palm Sunday. That is officially when Holy Week starts, and it carries on right through until Resurrection Sunday. So the Sunday night, the Monday night, the Tuesday night, the Wednesday, and the Thursday, we will have services in the church, and they will start at 18.30 or in the old language half past six in the evening. Of course very special again this year is on the Wednesday night the day before Tenebrae. Um, we are blessed in the sense that Neil Quilliam will be leading us in the Passover meal. Always so much to learn and has so much meaning. So please make a note of that. Come and join us it really and truly is going to be a wonderful time. Let's do what we came to do. We came to praise and worship. And we came to learn and hear what God has to say for us today. Our Old Testament reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 26. And I'm reading the first 11 verses. Hear the word of God. When you have entered the land that your Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land that the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians ill-treated us and made us suffer, subjecting us to harsh labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the Lord our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us to the place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. 
Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Come, let us pray together. Oh, dear Lord God and Heavenly Father, oh Lord, we greet you, Lord, as we've gathered today as your servants about you, as your children, because you are our God, and it is you that we've come to serve, it is you that we've come to praise and worship, Lord, because you are worthy of our praise. You are the God of gods and the Lord of lords. And yes, dear Lord Jesus, you are the King of kings. You are our Redeemer and Holy Spirit. You are our guide and our friend. And it is you that we've come to worship today because you are our triune God. But Lord, as we come this morning praising you and worshiping you, Lord, we also know that in a week that has gone by, Lord, we have sinned against you. And yes, Lord, we need to come clean with you, Lord. Lord, yes, because you gave us this wonderful opportunity and said to us that if we do repent and turn from our wicked ways, you will forgive us. So, Lord, we want to repent, Lord, right now. And we want to ask you, Lord, that you will just hear our hearts today as we bring them before you in our silence. So, Lord, we pray, hear our personal and individual confessions. Oh, dear Lord God, we've emptied our hearts before you. And Lord, we just want to pray that you will please forgive us our sins, Lord. Lord, you've promised us, and we know that your promises are trustworthy and that you are reliable because you are Almighty God and you love us, Lord, and that is why you want us to rid ourselves of all these sins. Oh, Lord, help us to realize that you have forgiven us, Lord, and when we go into a world that we do not feel inferior or we don't have these emotions of guilt because we know that you have forgiven us. Oh Lord, we thank you for that and we praise you. Oh Lord, we just pray that you will be with us in our service today and that you will just hold each and every one of us tightly. Bless our service today, Lord. Teach us. And this we pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of St. Luke. And I'm reading chapter 4, and I'm reading the first 13 verses. Hear the word of God. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all the authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all these tempting he left him until an opportune time. 
Come, let us ask the Lord to grant us the wisdom to understand his holy word to us today. Let us pray. Oh, yes, dear Lord Jesus, we have come today, Lord, to listen, to hear your word to us, Lord, and to learn from you, to try and discover what your purpose is in our lives, what your will is for us to do in this life we live. So, Lord, as we come, we just want to pray that you will speak to our hearts and speak to our minds. Let us absorb what it is that you have to say to us so that we can put that into practice and really please you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, as I bring your message to these, your people, I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you will take control of me and that everything I do and say will be your words and your meditations. And those words and meditations will bring you only honor and glory at all times. So, Lord, we pray now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today marks the first Sunday of Lent for the year 2022. Can you believe we are there already, moving into a time of Lent? Now, as I mentioned to you earlier, Lent is the time when Jesus moved into the desert. He moved in there to be tempted by the devil and and this was the mark where his ministry begins. This is where he goes through life and he gets prepared. But I want us, as we compare our lives to that of Jesus, there's a lot of lessons to be learned out of what happens here when Jesus goes into the desert. Remember that he goes into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And the scriptures are very clear in saying that in this time, Jesus ate nothing. It was a time of fasting. For those of you who attended the Ash Wednesday service, you will recall that I said, Ash Wednesday is about repentance and fasting. Because it is fasting that does not allow us to be distracted by the bodily pleasures we find on earth. But I want us to take cognizance what happens directly before this. Before this, Jesus goes to John the Baptist and he gets baptized. But as Jesus rises up out of the water, the scriptures tell us that the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. In other words, Jesus starts his ministry with the Holy Spirit. I want to ask you, I've met a lot of people and a lot of new people in our church and they are so eager to get working in the church for God. And people are very clear. They say, yes, we want to work for God. We want to do these things so that God may be glorified and do God's will in the church. And I'm telling you, I am so excited about that. But I do need to ask you that when we are so excited in serving God and working for God, where have we started? Remember, we come to Christ, we commit our lives to Christ, we become born again, and when we do that, Jesus has promised us that he will baptize us with the Holy Spirit. In other words, he gives us the Holy Spirit to reside within us. Now, if you already have 
committed your life to Christ. Then I want to say to you that the Holy Spirit resides within you. The old King James Version uses a beautiful word. It says, the Holy Spirit dwelleth. And when a person uses the term dwelleth, it means he stays. So the Holy Spirit stays in us. So I want to say to you this morning that before you can do anything for God, you need the Holy Spirit. Why is it so important that we have the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is the one that guides us. He is the one that takes us on the different paths. He is the one that empowers us to do whatever we have to do. He is the one that gives us, and I want to just mention this one spiritual gift. He is the one that helps us discern between right and wrong. You may say to me, John, why is this so important? That we know the difference between right and wrong. Now, I know we don't like talking about the devil. Other people call him Lucifer. Others have given him the name of Nick. But the devil is extremely cunning. The devil knows the Bible even better than what you and I do. The worst part is the devil knows you. He knows your weaknesses and he is extremely persuasive. He can persuade us to do things that we never even thought of dreaming of in doing in our lives. So when we come into a situation, the devil is definitely going to try his best in distracting us from doing God's will. How can I say that? Because the scriptures are clear. The devil wants you to do the direct opposite of what God wants you to do. And he does this by using cunning measures. Because he knows you, because he knows the scriptures, he does that. Now I want us to take a look at the example of Jesus here. The scriptures say to us, he went into the desert for 40 days a night, and he was tempted here by the devil. Because remember, what is Jesus going to do in the desert? He is going to prepare himself for his ministry on earth. Just like you. Just like me, we are going to do God's ministry amongst God's people. Because the devil wants the direct opposite of what God wants from us, he is going to be a conniver, he's going to deceive us, and he's going to want to distract us from our ministry. So yet Jesus goes, and the Bible says to us, he ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them it says he was hungry. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you. But I don't know if I'll ever be able to make 40 days without any food. Because I'm a foodie. And I love my food. I don't think I can go even a day without food. But yet Jesus went for 40 days and 40 nights... And the scriptures say he was hungry. Do you know what? Then this old deceiver, the devil, appears to him. And he says, if you are the son. You see what he's trying to do? If you are the son. He's trying to bring doubt into the mind of Jesus. And that he does to us as well. Whenever we go and we want to do something for God, what do, we, what do we do? What is our normal first reaction? 
am I good enough to do this for God? Or do I know enough to go and minister for God? Do I and am I worthy enough to go and do what God wants me to do? Those are the questions we ask. And we ask those questions because it is the devil that asks us and he wants to sow doubt. He w doesn't want us to have that surety that Jesus Christ is our Lord and that we are the children of God. So he says to, to Jesus, he says, if you are the son of God, till the stone to become bread. In other words, what he's doing here, first he says doubt, and then he says, but by chance if you are, till that stone to become bread. In other words, immediately here, the devil acknowledges the almightiness of God, but he tries to bring in a bit of doubt to Jesus in if he'll be able to turn that stone into bread. Why bread? Because you see, he knows that Jesus is hungry. He knows if Jesus was like me, and I believe it was, his tummy was rumbling, begging for some food. And I tell you something, a nicely fresh hot baked bread. Oh boy. That is so nice, with nice thick butter, some lovely apricot or fig jam. Man, that is paradise. The devil knows that, and that is why he tempts Jesus in bringing that before him. But Jesus remembers, and he knows why he's in the desert, and he's n he knows he's come to do a job, and he knows he's come to prepare himself so that he can start his ministry. And Jesus responds in a manner which is great. And he says, for it is written. In other words, he is here referring to the Torah. He's referring to the Bible that the Jews then had, the Torah. For it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. In other words, he doesn't say, I'm not hungry. No, he doesn't say that. But he realizes that his ministry and his time in the desert is more important than his hunger, than his bodily cravings. Because he knows he's there to prepare for the ministry. But the devil doesn't let go there. Oh, no. He goes one step further, and yeah, he wants to, to, to bring doubt into Jesus again, if he is the son. And, he and he, what he does is, he goes up here and he says to him, the devil led him to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the, of the world. Okay? And he says to him, I will give you all the authority and splendor because those have been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. But then he says, if you worship me, it will all be yours. Now just, now just stop and think there for a minute. You know, we get caught up in this thing of worship me. Yes, but if Jesus had to worship the devil, what would that mean? That would mean he would give up his right as the son of God. In other words, he will give up his birthright, his birthright as being the son of God. Again, the devil calls into question here. Yeah? And does that sound familiar to you? By giving up your birthright? Just think back for a little bit on the stories we have in the scripture. Think of, of Esau and Jacob. What happened? Esau came home, funnily enough, here again. Bodily cravings, he was hungry, and Jacob had made a lovely pot of lentil soup. 
Jacob says to him, you can have this, but then I want your inheritance. I want your birthright. I want to be known as the one, the firstborn of this family. And Esau gives it to him. And he was tricked by Jacob. But yet he did not hesitate to give it up. And that is why, although Jacob was shrewd, and although Jacob led his father around the bush, God was still upset with Esau because he gave up his birthright, acknowledging that he was the firstborn. And yeah, the devil plays with that same story and he brings it in here and he's basically asking Jesus to do the same, but he's doing it in trick form. You know, to me, when I think of this, I think of how cunning the devil is, but he's also stupid. Because all the kingdoms of the earth were created by God. And Jesus is God. So although they're not following Jesus, Jesus created them. Remember the scripture says, Everything was created through Jesus. Again, Jesus responds in a manner, and he says, it is written. In other words, he's going back to the Torah. He's saying again, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Folks, how many times do we get distracted in life? And how many times do we not allow our cravings to get the better of us? So much so that we are willing to sacrifice everything just so that we can get to our goal. Instead of thinking of the bigger picture, what is it that God wants from us? Are you willing to seal your birthright so that you can have a successful life on earth that you can get everything you want on earth serving your body serving your cravings serving yourself on this earth you may say to me John how do I mean because remember just like Jesus God has adopted us and our inheritance is that of God. So as soon as we dwell or go away from what God has intended for us, and we follow the temptations of the devil, in whichever form they come, whether it's the ways of the world, the cravings of the body, we are then rejecting our birthright. We are rejecting God as our Father. And our inheritance then goes elsewhere. The final temptation here says the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. And he said, if you are the Son of God, again, he asked that question, if you are the Son of God. Again, trying to bring doubt into the mind of Jesus. Just like he does with us. Because we keep on questioning, are we worthy? Oh, can I do this? And we keep forgetting that it is God that empowers us. It's God that strengthens us. It's God that gives us everything we need. But he says... If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. And listen how cunning the devil is. Here he quotes from Scripture. The devil quotes from Scripture. Remember I said to you he knows the Scriptures? Here he quotes and he says, For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, 
carefully. You see how cunning he is? He says, throw yourself off here. Yeah? Because the Bible says, the Lord will command his angels to guard you carefully. You see what he's doing? And that he does with us constantly. And the devil says to him, they will lift you up in their hands so that you do not strike your foot against a stone. Folks, how many times have we not been led astray? And how many times have we not seen all these promises being made to us? But Jesus responds in a manner. And he knows his scriptures correctly. And Jesus again quotes from the scriptures, but he quotes them and he says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Folks, you see what has happened here? God has, has led Jesus into the wilderness. Now in the wilderness, I don't know if you've ever stopped to think what is the wilderness, because the wilderness is a desert. It is a place that is desolate, it is a place where there is nothing. And it's in this place of nothing that all these temptations are brought before Jesus. Now you know what? In a modern day context, we can allow the devil to come in and we can get our wealth, we can get our money, we can get everything we want, but yet we are filled with nothing. You can have all the money in the world and you are still filled with nothing. Classic example. Take a look at our celebrities, our wonderful actors. How many of them with all their wealth, all their riches, all their palaces, all their fancy motor cars actually become drug addicts? And you know why they become drug addicts? It's because their souls are in a wilderness. They are filled with nothing. Is that how you want to live? Yes, I know it'll be nice to have a Ferrari. Yes, I know it'll be nice to, to live in a mansion. Yes, I know it'll be nice to have the money. But those are all bodily cravings. Things that we can overcome. Things that the Lord will provide and give to us. Because with all those things, our soul is still empty. It is in a wilderness. Folks, this passage ends, and I'm also going to end off now. But this passage ends, and it says, When the devil had finished all the tempting, he left him until an opportune time. What does that say to us? It says no matter how hard we try, no matter how hard we try and move away from the devil, the devil will keep coming back and back over and over and over again until an opportune time where he can tempt us again. So folks, in this time of Lent, make this Lent one of repentance one of recommitting our lives to Jesus Christ, and one again of allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us. I'm sure if we think back in the past, how we listened to the Holy Spirit, we will remember. My challenge to you is to once again open your ears. Hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to you. Protect yourself in this period of Lent against those persuasive, cunning, conniving ways of the evil one. And the only way you can do that is through the Holy Spirit, by committing your life again to Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, let us pray. 
Oh, gracious Lord, we've heard your word to us today, Lord. And yes, Lord, indeed, we are in a very important time, a very important season on the Christian calendar. Oh, yes, Lord, we know that in the time of Lent, the devil is up to all his tricks, trying to trick us into doing things that you do not want us to do. Oh, Lord, today we pray that you will just grant us the strength and the power to overcome the temptation of the evil one. We pray, dear Lord God, that you will just give us that spirit of discernment so that we can discern and know the difference between right and wrong and what your will is and what you want from us, Lord. We so often neglect that, Lord, and then we fall prey to the evil one. Lord, you equip us with your Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit, we pray that you will just lead us and guide us and hold us tightly through this period of Lent so that we do not fall prey. And when that opportune time comes for the devil, that, Lord, you will still be with us and that we will still resist him and bring you all the honor and the glory. Oh Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we can just call upon you and that you will give us the necessary tools and equipment to overcome the evil one so that we may be reunited with you in glory. So Lord, we pray and we praise you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Folks, once again, our service has come to an end. It's been an honor and a privilege for me to share God's word with you today. I'm so thankful and grateful that you allowed me into wherever you may be today just to share God's word. So, because it's the end of our service, Receive now the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Folks, I pray that you will have a wonderful week, that God will bless you with His richest blessings, and that you will just continue your journey in this difficult time, and especially this time of Lent. So, until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, and always remember that Jesus is only a prayer way. Goodbye now.